I'll be having very interesting guests who have personal stories to tell to the world. Welcome to MND World Talk Show. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to MNB World Talk Show. Today, I have a very interesting activist in the studio. <laughs> uh, his fight has been uh, to lower the bank interest rate in Mongolia, and he's very popular of this uh, fight <laughs> among the Mongolians. So he is the director and founder of Novel Investment LLC and economist, Mr. Angar Tawasron. Thank you very much. Let's go straight into my first question. Mm -hmm. Why are you trying to lower the bank interests in Mongolia? Aren't you afraid of these big banks? Mm -hmm. Okay, and tell me why, and tell me the solutions that you are offering. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not only me who's uh, uh, fighting against the, the very high interest rates mm -hmm. in Mongolia. Mm -hmm. It's all like, three million people in Mongolia. I mean, <clears throat> it's true that we, the Mongolia as a country, uh, transferred to a new system, mm -hmm. market-based uh, system in 1990. Mm -hmm. But it's been, it's been almost 30 years since the transition. Mm -hmm. It's enough time for the country to grow, country to prosper, for the uh, domestic uh, companies to grow, right? But as of today, we're still in a transition process. Still, <laughs> still, <laughs> after 30 years, mm -hmm. can you can you believe that? Mongolia is one of the uh, countries where interest rate is uh, very high. Very by very high, I mean, I mean uh, I'm talking about banking. Uh, for example, like uh, business loans mm -hmm. from commercial banks, right? Mm -hmm. I'm talking about 20 to 40 percent. Year. 40. Is there a such bank? Yes, still operating today in Mongolia. And uh, also we have these non-bank financial institutions in Mongolia where many small and medium-sized enterprises and people get their like, uh, financing. Mm -hmm. Where interest rate is 60 to 100% per year. Wow. Monthly interest payment of 5 to 10%. And also, uh, people who do not have uh, privilege to get loans from banks or uh, non-bank financial institutions, they go to pawn shops. Pawn shops. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. called Lombards, right? Yes. Where interest rate is 200 to 300% per year. So uh, that's the system we're living today. That's the country we're living today in terms of like uh, financial market. What's the solution you're offering? Well, uh, in very shortly. Mm -hmm. We, uh, I mean, uh, studied all the country's practice, right, histories. And it's not like market, it's mm -hmm. or it's not some banks, or it's not some market participants who took the measures. Mm -hmm. It's the government. So we suggested uh, that uh, the Mongolian government mm -hmm. should take such measures to lower the interest rates. Mm -hmm. But there's, so a, there's a bill in discussion in the parliament about putting a limit on the uh, bank interest, right? Exactly. Bank loan interest. So um, uh, I think that was the um, uh, that was the good, uh, let's say, beginning point mm -hmm. in terms of first step. <laughs> first step, exactly. Yes. So uh, uh, the party head of democratic uh, uh, head of democratic party, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Erden submit this bill mm -hmm. uh, to parliament. It's called um, uh, putting interest rate uh, restrictions on mm -hmm. financial institutions. But, I mean, we, uh, we were involved in, the, in, the, in this process mm -hmm. in terms of like working group and mm -hmm. uh, on a technical side. But, I mean, uh, we uh, get the idea from, for example, US from Japan, mm -hmm. from Germany, mm -hmm. from Australia, uh, South Korea, mm -hmm. uh, also uh, our neighbors, right? Neighbors. You have only two neighbors, Russia yes. and China. They all have this law. Uh -huh. They, over like 80 countries, 
put restrictions on uh, interest rates. In term, I mean, for uh, financial institutions, banks, non-banks. Mm -hmm. uh, so Mongolia is uh, taking a first step mm -hmm. in introducing interest rate caps for um, mm -hmm. uh, financial institutions. The currently, the draft of the bill suggests that the bank should not lend money uh, above uh, with an interest rate above 20%. 20? Uh, 18, 18%. 18. 18% per annum, right? Mm -hmm. Non-bank financial institutions mm -hmm. should not lend money uh, with an interest rate above 35%. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, I mean, a good start. Uh, but currently, uh, as you can see, it's uh, this bill is facing lots of, let's say, um, Discussions, oppositions, oppositions from, from uh, banks, right? Criticisms, banks, yes. yes. Especially banks. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yes. bank-sponsored, uh, let's say, people. Mm, so, okay. uh, very there's political. A, yes, <laughs> uh, it, it's now becoming very political. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Mongolia needs this law, needs this as soon as possible, because we remained as one of the countries where interest rate is on average above like 20%. Above 2030, right? Yes. We uh, started off quite politically and economically. And mm -hmm. uh, since we started that, uh, let's see the background on paper of Mr. Angartaus. <laughs> Okay, from your resume, I'd say, mm -hmm. you left the United States when you were 19 years old. Mm -hmm. What was the most shocking thing about United States and the, your atmosphere, new country? Well, uh, yes, I went to the US uh, uh, to get my bachelor's degree. I studied in the uh, University of Central Arkansas. To be honest, uh, there wasn't anything to be I mean, shocked about. I mean, uh, first, uh, in the first year, right, we studied English. Uh, aside from English, I mean, there's some classes about like, like culture shock, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we did not understand what culture shock was. <laughs> what? All other students, <laughs> students from Korea, right? Uh -huh. Students from Japan, students uh -huh. from China. I mean, uh, maybe they were shocked. Okay. Ab about a new environment, about mm -hmm. the new conditions, about yes. the new people, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, <laughs> for you? Uh, for not not on for me. Uh -huh. For Mongolian students, uh -huh. we talked about what is culture shock. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, so maybe it's uh, it's in our blood, uh -huh. right? Maybe it's in, uh, for Mongolian people. We have I don't know, some sort of like, uh, uh, let's say survival. Are you trying to say adaptive quality? I, I think so. Yeah, maybe that was it. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, f uh, when, I when we were like 19 or 20 years old, right? When we first go to the America, mm -hmm. uh, to the States, mm -hmm. some Japanese students, they mm -hmm. were shocked. Some of them were like, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I would say, in a very difficult uh, position. Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, position, right? But for you Mongolian students, okay. not only me, I mean, uh, there was like five or six of us, uh -huh. right, <laughs> who, who went to the same school. Okay. So, uh, in general, we weren't shocked. I mean, uh, we were qu uh, qu uh, quite relaxed, I would mm -hmm. say. And so that was it. You studied in the United States and you studied in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. You lived there. Mm -hmm. Why did you come back? Well, I mean... What uh, was so important that you came back? You could have lived there, you could have, you know make family there? Well, I mean, uh, U.S., I did my bachelor. Mm -hmm. I was uh, finished the school when I was 23. So uh, I had to come back to get mm -hmm. some real, let's say, work experience. Uh -huh. So 
I joined, luckily I joined the uh, Ministry of Finance mm -hmm. uh, and uh, worked there for over 10 years. So uh, based on, on such experience, I would say you, you, get, you get to learn things mm -hmm. by uh, like uh, practices, right? Yes. So, I mean, university is a university. You read books, you mm -hmm. uh, take exams, right? Yeah. Everything but was very academic. Yes. But uh, I would say my real university was Ministry of Finance. Oh. Uh, I learned many things, mm -hmm. not only like uh, like finance, but mm -hmm. I uh, get to meet people, mm -hmm. get to learn uh, new things. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, uh, when I was working at the Ministry of Finance, I was heading the debt management division, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, that time, uh, we had this technical uh, assistant program with the World Bank. So, uh, professionally, uh, that program helped me a lot in terms of like learning finance, mm -hmm. practicing finance. Uh, so, my real university was Mongolia's Ministry of Finance. So, your intention was never to leave abroad? Uh, well, af uh, after... Uh, working for Minister of Finance, uh, Minister of Finance, right? Mm -hmm. They, uh, let's say, sends uh, its staff mm -hmm. to some embassies abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, so I was, I was selected to work at the uh, Mongolian embassy in London mm -hmm. for three years, from 2011 to two 2014, mm -hmm. as a trade attaché, trade and finance attaché. Mm -hmm. So okay. also that was turning point uh, for my uh, professional, mm. uh, let's say, life, right? In 2014, when, I, when my diplomatic posting mm -hmm. finished, finished, I had to come, come back. back. Uh -huh. And I joined um, uh, Mongolia's Mongolian Stock Exchange. When I joined Mongolian Stock Exchange as CEO in, back in 2014, I was shocked. Mm. The daily trade uh, volume was, in terms of USD, Take a guess. Mongolia's Mongolian stock exchange daily trading volume <laughs> in terms of USD. Let me say, in terms of USD. Yes. Okay, it might might have been very low. Two thousand dollars a daily, you said. Daily, daily basis. Two thousand dollars. Twenty thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> still, still twenty thousand dollars. Twenty thousand. It's not twenty million dollars, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, so I was shocked. Okay. Uh, so then we had to take some approaches in turning uh, MSC into a, uh, let's say, different organization. Mm -hmm. So at that time uh, I had a... What's the amount of daily exchange today? Oh, now it's billions. Now it's billions. Billions? Yes. By billions? Uh, yes, exactly. Wow. Mm -hmm. Because uh, still, I mean, m uh, that time, I told you, right, I worked for the Ministry of Finance over yes. 10 years. and. Uh, minist it, it's Minister of Finance who sent me to MS, uh, Mongolian Stock mm -hmm. Exchange as CEO. So uh, I have, let's say, quite good uh, let, let's say connection to Minister of Finance, right? Mm -hmm. So that time I uh, you were there. I the lobbied, mission. yeah. I, I yeah. lobbied uh, Minister of Finance uh, officials to introduce government uh, securities to be mm -hmm. traded at the Mongolian Stock Exchange. So that was the turning point. Uh, so I think um, after it's be I think it was November of 2014, which means um, uh, it's been like five months since I joined uh, mm -hmm. MSC, right? Mm -hmm. So then Minister of Finance allowed MSC to trade like uh, T bills, treasury bills, mm -hmm. where the amount is like. In, in billions, in terms of U.S. states, millions, right? Mm -hmm. Not just thousands. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think it pushed the MSC into a whole different level. It um, attracts lots of interest from domestic mm -hmm. uh, investors as well as foreign investors. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you got out of uh, Mongolian Stock Exchange, what happened? In 2015. You joined private sector? Yes. Uh, so, uh, during that time, I saw a lot of potential in Mongolia's domestic finance sector. Anything is possible. So mm. 
after exiting the Mongolian stock exchange, I created this small company called Mongolian Financial Exchange, <laughs> where companies can raise money more effectively, mm -hmm. quicker, faster, with much less complications. So mm -hmm. I created this Mongolian financial, financial exchange uh, with the purpose of uh, establishing, it's called like OTC market. Okay. In order to get listed at uh, Mongolian Stock Exchange, you, you need to get approval from Mongolia's uh, financial regula uh, regulations uh, yeah. uh, regulator, mm -hmm. where it takes almost maybe six ma six to 12 months. Really? Yes, so that's why... That's it's quite a long time. Uh, exactly. Who would, who would like to, uh, who we, wants uh, to Yes, work? so that's why I created yeah. this OTC market okay. and called this organization, uh, organization Mongolia's, Mongolian Finan mm -hmm. Financial Exchange. Mm -hmm. So it was a, a bit ambitious plan. Yeah, yeah, wasn't <laughs> it kind of and betrayal <laughs> from the Mongolian no, no, Stock no, Exchange? No, no, no. Uh, my purpose was to offer to uh, offer new alternatives to Mongolian companies to gain access to cheaper capital, to mm -hmm. uh, 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 cheaper cost of financing. But so what about the, the stock exchange you just got out? You had you had made exactly. improvement, it's and then you opened up much easier way to approach the financial. Uh, exactly, uh -huh. it's called Mongolian stock exchange, right? Yes. So I created Mongolian financial exchange mm -hmm. with an emphasis on bond trading. Uh -huh. Mostly now on you're connecting yes, the dots. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I introduced you as a founder of Novel Investment LSE, mm -hmm. and we have, as you know, we have prepared a small video about his private business mm -hmm. process as of today. Let's mm -hmm. take a look at that. For the last 30 years since the uh, economic transition to uh, a free market economy, the Mongolian financial sector was dominated by commercial banks, where commercial banks accounted for over 95% of all financing in the domestic economy. Uh, thus, uh, Mongolian domestic companies were limited only to like bank. Uh, two years ago, Mongolian construction companies were facing severe problem because most commercial banks stopped giving loans to uh, construction com uh, companies completely. As a result, uh, Mongolian construction companies started to have severe problems where they could not uh, finish their um, building projects, which uh, further leads to uh, like. Um, deficiencies in their like uh, financial statements. Uh, so a couple of years ago, we, uh, Ostland Construction was our uh, first customers um, uh, in raising capital from, uh, from the public, not from commercial banks. So the objective of uh, Mongolian Financial Exchange was to raise capital from, um, from the public for domestic companies to finish their ongoing project where cost of financing is much lower than commercial banks as well as the timing uh, of raising capital much quicker. So two years ago we um, cooperated with Ochtlan Construction this is a building project where all Mongolian commercial banks stopped lending money to construction companies. So that was the, the bi uh, big problem for construction companies but on the other hand it was good timing to develop a new financial products in the Mongolian domestic uh, financial market. So that's our um, achievement, I would say, in the, as a result of creating Mongolian financial exchange in, uh, to, to create new opportunities, new options for uh, Mongolian domestic companies in, in terms of raising capital. Well, okay, you have uh, over 10 years of experience in Mongolian economics mm -hmm. industry. From your personal perspective, what is the key to Mongolian economic development? Uh, I would say only one thing for now. Just lower the interest rates and leave the other to companies. They will, 
they'll grow themselves. They'll, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, make their way through uh -huh. f for development. Mm -hmm. So, as of today, I would say uh, the solution is only one thing: just lo lower mm -hmm. the just interest lower rates. Interest. Just, I mean, we're not asking too much, right? Uh, we're not asking, for example, single-digit uh, interest rates. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not asking like. Uh, three to five percent business uh, like uh, uh, business loans mm -hmm. as in like other many other countries mm -hmm. currently Mongolian companies are also asking for uh, business loans where interest rate is below 18 percent still very high mm -hmm. right but for now <laughs> for now <laughs> just Please. allow the interest rate and <laughs> let everything okay. to companies okay. I mean they're smart they're innovative mm -hmm. they'll They'll do fine. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, working with numbers is a stressful job. Mm -hmm. I know I cannot do it. How do you prefer to spend your free time? Do you have hobby? Well, uh, in my opinion, right yeah. now it's a, I would say it's a golden uh, I would age of okay. opportunities for uh, like finance sector. Mm. In one hand, right, Mongolia's finance sector is, let's say, so uh, many problems. Uh, we have. So many problems, which means there are lots of new potentials, new opportunities. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, uh, so lately I've been working like day in day out, very busy. Mm -hmm. I don't have much time for um, hobbies or uh, mm -hmm. uh, whenever I have time, I would prefer to spend uh, more time with my family, with my kids, right? Mm -hmm. How to relieve your stress? Uh, yes, I mean, uh, out. Uh, lately I, I've been developing this uh, thing with my friends. Uh, mm -hmm. Like every other weekend we go outside, mm -hmm. the, out of the city. Uh, it's a sport, it's called like, practical. <laughs> Is it really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you you yeah. have a hard time to say <laughs> yes. it. <laughs> yes. Uh, we have taken a footage about his hobby with guns. Let's take a look at that video. Okay, today we uh, came, this, came to this uh, shooting range. This is called practical shooting. Uh, this, this is a sport. Uh, this sport uh, has become very popular among Mongolians in the la uh, last few years. I think this is one of the fastest growing sport in Mongolia in terms of popularity. Uh, so I uh, try to come here every other weekend with my friends to shoot some range for fun and uh, sometimes we organize some kind of uh, small competition among among ourselves so uh, so this is my new hobby uh, it's uh, it's been only like uh, 6 months since i uh, joined this practical shooting sport previously i did not have much experience i mean shooting guns but uh, like i said earlier it's been my new hobby, we, uh, so with some of my friends, we started this uh, uh, this thing for uh, for last only six months, and I would say our progress is quite good. We're uh, we're happy with our results. Uh, six months ago, we just uh, shooting. Uh, we, uh, we started to work with with, uh, uh, with like uh, practical shooting guns, but now. Uh, we cannot say we're like um, pro level, but uh, we're okay. We're getting better. Well, to me, it looks very unusual hobby. Anyways, you have two children. You're a father and a wife. <laughs> you're a, and, a, and a husband to a wife, yeah. of course. And uh, what is the biggest concern when it comes to raising children 
mm-hmm. in today's world as a father as a husband in my opinion right yes. to be honest the pollution is the big concern f- mm-hmm. for me for my children mm-hmm. mongolian winter is uh, is horrible mm-hmm. i mean we're not talking about the cold weather right it's it's all right we're, we're used to it mm-hmm. but it's the pollution mm-hmm. who's um, in my opinion it has l- uh, lots of damage to young uh, y- I mean, young children. So that was my uh, currently um, biggest concern. Mm-hmm. I mean, all other things we can manage, right? Education. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mongol ed- Mongolia's education system is has some problems, mm-hmm. but we can fix it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Mongolia's, ec- uh, I mean, health system mm-hmm. has some deficiencies. We can we can fix it. Mm-hmm. We can uh, find a way around. Mm-hmm. But pollution. We live in it's this. Been lingering. Yes, and we lived like uh, almost like war level pollution for three months. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not worried about let's say me or my uh-huh. wife. Okay, uh-huh. I mean, for but f- uh, for our children, it's it's mm-hmm. uh, it's a worrying uh, fact. So, well, we've talked about the bad. Now let's talk about the good future. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What is to your opinion, what is bright future? For please Mongolia. give me some for Mongolia. Please oh give yes. me some details. It's so my favorite topic. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have lots of potentials, right? Geograph. I mean, uh, our location is has lots of advantages. Okay. Either geopolitically or uh, in terms of natural resources, so we have everything: mm-hmm. gold, copper, you name it. W- we're uh, neighbors with worlds biggest markets, mm. right? Russia and China. Mm-hmm. Also, we have very good um, relationship with uh, US and uh, European, uh, EU, and all of the countries. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, practically we have everything, which means we have very bright future. Mm-hmm. So I have no d- uh, doubt about that, but currently only uh, our like political system the corruption in uh, government level it's it's killing us so mm-hmm. but i think i have i mean I, i'm not worried about that i think it's one of the stage where countries should go, go through, through. yes mm-hmm. so i think we're just uh, i mean us had uh, corruptions kind of yeah uh, uk you name it. Uh, every other country ha- had its own problems mm-hmm. i think mongolia is just facing the problems we must mm-hmm. let's say go through right so but uh, Somehow, uh, lately, I'm feeling that this, uh, this uh, like uh, bad timing, mm-hmm. uh, bad days are over. Uh, uh-huh. I think Mongolia is, uh, let's say, either from politically, uh, the, I mean, uh, reading the latest news, right? Mm-hmm. All, like, let's say, big guys are being arrested. Mm-hmm. So, times are changing. So, mm-hmm. I think, in my opinion, that's a good thing. So if we can clear this uh, corruption, corrupted mm-hmm. officials from the government, Mongolia has lots of future. We can be next to, let's say, Emirates or... Mm-hmm. I have no doubt about that. I have no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Angar. Thank you for inviting me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For sharing all this information. Mm-hmm. And I wish you good health and good luck. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Well, that's it for our talk show and uh, this was Mr. Angar Dawasurung, founder and director of Novell Investment LLC and uh, goodbye until next week. Mm-hmm.